Hey, it's Bryce, uh, back with episode about sensitivity, part two, right? So, just a refresher, uh, sensory sensitivity is like doing those tedious tasks, taking a really long test, and then feeling absolutely overloaded afterwards. That feeling is way more readily uh, after simple things like taking a walk down the stairs or you know, hearing loud music, right? So, part two, right? And we're gonna cover uh, feeling, like your, you know, your actual feeling, like a touch, uh, grabbing something hot or cold. Uh, we'll cover group uh, sensitivity, so going to the mall, going to a convention, and how bad that can really be, and uh, vestibular, right? <coughs> so, uh, actually losing that hearing and you know what it does to your sense of balance which is trust me not fun <laughs> so with first uh first part without further ado we want to talk about feeling right so how this affects me and how very scarily this affects me when i first came home right within that week so actually i had the surgery on my right side right on my left side for about a week I could not feel temperature at all. I had to ask my wife if, you know, something was hot or cold because this side was pretty much just numb and this side was uncomfortably numb, right? So if this is happening to you, if you do feel this, don't freak out. Definitely go talk to a doctor about it. But, uh, you know, it does happen to at least one more person. So... Uh, things to avoid, right? Obviously, you know, drawing your own bath, you know, because you can't tell the temperature. Uh, being outside, because any extreme temperature, especially being, you know, too cold outside, will make it hard to function, right? <clears throat> your hearing, not your hearing, sorry. Your uh, facial features, um, talking, right? Your eye will... Uh, It'll just basically just make it uncomfortable to act and, you know, move normally, right? So the best way uh, to avoid this is to be smart when you're uh, dealing with hot things or cold things, right? Uh, such as like a hot pot or, you know, a skillet or just going outside when it's like 30 degrees outside, right? So the second thing I want to talk about is group sensitivity. Right now, what does that really mean? Um, going to the mall and the mall is packed. That was an issue for me up until about month three and it's still technically an issue now. I just get through it. But I'll, I'll tell a story about this. I'll give you a little anecdote. Went to the mall on Black Friday. I literally just walked around Dillard's for like an hour because I could not focus on anything and I didn't know where I was for uh, like 20 minutes like it was uncomfortable so but it is something that happens it is something to work through now what are things that you should really avoid with group sensitivity so anything with really a large group makes sense right <clears throat> so that means going to the supermarket going to the grocery store you know being in a crowded parking lot is hard Right, being in heavy traffic, right, driving and being around a bunch of cars, that can affect your sensitivity to groups, and it can be a hazard, right. So how to avoid it? Have somebody else do those things for you, right. You have, you know, people who are taking care of you. You have caretakers. You have friends, right. You have to lean on them in this case, because it, you know, like I said, it will be a hazard, right. It is something that will get better, like the other things, hopefully. But, you know, in the beginning, especially in the beginning, it's something to lean on. Now, the last one is uh, your vestibular, you know, basically your sense of balance after uh, losing your ear, right? In my particular case, I uh, lost my eighth cranial nerve uh, to my right ear. Now, you know, tidbit, before the surgery, I had major hearing loss to the point that I basically thought I was deaf. Oh, man, was I surprised when I lost my hearing and what it actually meant, right? So 
you have your inner ear, which controls balance. So, fun fact, when you lose your hearing, you lose your sense of balance, pretty much. Now you may ask, you know, Bryce, how are you walking? You know, how are you functioning? Very carefully. So, I have had issues in the past, up until last weekend, to where I fell on a hiking trail because I did not know where the ground was, right? This is getting better and there are ways to improve it. Um, I've been going to physical therapy to try and get this, you know, sense of balance back. But, it, you know, it basically it is something I have to deal with. And, you know, unfortunately, if you have hearing loss, it's something that you might have to deal with. Now, good news is uh, there's, you know, things you can do to help you regain some sense of balance. You know, uh, going to physical therapy, uh, which we'll cover in our next video, right? Um, but the things to avoid why it is an issue uh, for you is uh, large crowds, uneven surface, uh, being in the dark. That's a that's a weird one, but being in the dark definitely want to avoid that. <laughs> um, all around, just be safe. So that's it for sensory sensitivity. Uh, hopefully, this will give you some insight in what it's like to uh, live with a brain tumor and subsequent uh, brain surgery. Uh, join next time. I'll cover uh, you know exercises I do and uh, things I do in the gym to help me regain uh, some sense of normalcy and activity. Um, I look forward to uh, showing you a video in the coming months. I will have to get the uh, gamma knife uh, for the rest of the brain tumor. Um, and I'll look forward to showing you what's happening there and then and you know, of course my recovery from that so you have something to look uh, to as a reference. Um, until then, Hopefully you subscribe to my page and you have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye. If you like this video, just click here and subscribe.